Okay, we're back on this 45 again. I'm trying to figure out the shift linkage here. So I gotta come up with something that works down in here. Get another camera. So this here clevis I don't like too much because it's too big. It doesn't fit between the transmission and the inner primary in there anyway. Try to put a clevis pin on there. So what I came up with, I came up with this uh, master cylinder piece off a 70 shovel head. Clevis, and it fits in here pretty good on the lever right there. And it's pretty narrow, so it should fit in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> take this here, right there, and get to it. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here. I'm going to drill and tap it right through the center there. So this 516 thread right here, and I'll thread it on there just like this one is here, just like that. I'll figure out what length I need this rod to be overall, and I'm going to go ahead and weld this to the rod here, and that should hold it in there pretty good. And that allows us to have a shift lever here that fits up to our shift lever right there to make it work and still clear the inner primary back in here. Because we can't get the parts we need, so we have to make stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my lathe and start working on this and see what it looks like after I get it cut up. We back. All right, what are you working on over here? Uh, we ain't gonna tell you, man. Go away. Go away. We're not filming we'll this. Take the seat off. You want me to put the seat back? Oh, the seat on fell off. Take off. Tanks are coming off. We're not taking the tank off until he measures this. We're gonna do. A, we're gonna do one of the Tatra Machine famous five dollar paint jobs. I think the cans are up to ten dollars now, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, ten dollar paint job. Rattle can. We're going to uh, make some spacers up for the gas tank that go between these two uh, brackets right here. That's what holds the gas tanks on around the frame. Huh? Where? Right here. Right here. See where my fingers at? Yeah. There's, there's a spacer in there about an inch and three quarter long, 200, two inches, something like that. There's another one up here too in the front. See, Fred. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, and I'm going to have to find some probably yeah, that can right, hold inner tube. Put in the middle, yeah, right. Then we got to do an inner tube or something around the frame up in here so when it pinches on the uh, rubber between the frame and the tank, that keeps the tanks from going side to side and breaking. It's this one right here. If you don't have that, then these tanks will break up here. These holes will break or break down the whole slot. So you got to make sure you do that so it doesn't vibrate. The other thing we got to do is we got to take the uh, 45 degree fittings here and grind them and make them more round looking like this one here. So it looks more vintage instead of like this modern crap here. Because I can't find any more of these things, so we'll just have to make them. Instead of making one and have one like that, one like this, we'll have them. We'll grind both of these to make them look like that. And I put this feet in here so I can hold in the vise and grind these with a the grinder. So anyway, we got a couple things going on. So you're working hard there. You're holding that up real nice. I was trying to stay away. Now you also take this right here. You can unbolt these two bolts, paint that block, and stick that over here where the nuts go. Because that's the factory nut plate I found that goes right there. Okay. Yeah, pretty fancy. Does it have screw holes in it? It has threaded screw holes. Threaded that's why it's called a nut plate. And are they right? Are these the same correct thread? Uh, I, would I, hope I, so. I bet I would put money they're not. Well, they should be fine thread, but it might be coarse, but it should be fine thread. But these are fine. Uh, you have to look. Those bolts there are probably chorus, but they Can should be fine. Off? Whatever it takes to get to those two nuts. Now, we're not going to put a battery in here yet because we haven't made that part yet. Hey, hey, hey. You notice how you do it? See that? Oh, Take the I'm nut sorry. off your nut instead I didn't, of doing it like I you did it. it. What about this part? This part here stays. That's why you have to put a wrench in here. That's why they have a nut plate in there because it makes it a lot easier to put together. So now I get the hard part and you're taking it apart. That's right. Thank you very much. I was making it easy on you. Where's the box? Where's the toolbox? Tools are gone. Yeah, well, we have two cylinders. Uh, not here. He's on about five eighths round. Five eighths round, quarter inch diameter. Five eight, nine, okay. Round. All right, we'll be back. What we got? Got a Harley. Fred's back. Got my, got my safety shoes on. You already said everybody had your shoes on. Well, this is a different video. They're gonna. Oh. <laughs> We, we got a reset. We only do 15. Take the safe, well, we were over there, for those of you who are joining us, just joining us. <laughs> now we're over here. Yeah, but that goes on a different playlist than this one. This is. That's what I said. That's why I did that. So this is okay, a we're back. Different application. This is the real Harley playlist. That's just a chopper playlist.
a bobber or bar hopper or the, this the this what's the, all the names there. we could use? Piles of crap. Death trap. Piles of crap. Okay, it uh -oh, appears that's, that that's bottomed go. out, so no, that's not gonna I go guess I had this down the right spot when I started. Yeah, you did. Now you got to make everything else fit to that. Well, I see that I don't have the tanks up here because somebody took them. Hey, where's the tank? Oh, they're in here. Tanks are getting, oh, barbecue. Oh, barbecue. It's only 142 now. It was up to 178. That was a ten dollar paint job there. Woo! Look at that. that, that it's melting onto the. Brain. It's melting onto the, all of the. We don't care about anything that falls out of the oven onto the paint job. Oh, don't do that. That's where we used to cook, cook our tortillas. You can't cook tortillas by the way. Well, well after all the lead you melted in there. Oh, excuse me. Not, not lead, but that stuff that. What? Uh, what do you say? No. I <laughs> I mean, what do you, I would never melt lead. That's not lead. Some other, some other, what is that? Plastic or something? No. <laughs> Where's your shoes? Let me see how heavy it is. Well, this is, this is the other one, too, the hammer. I don't know where that came from. I'm gonna break the concrete to keep doing that. Somebody donated it to Somebody donated it? I don't know. All right, all right so back to this thing. Now we can see all the lines I made, how they fit up here real nice. Sweet. Not the tanks are out of here. Something a little bit tension when I, when I loosen the nut up and bent the line over. Precision bat. There. Let me straighten that back up. There we go. I'm adjusting it. I come from the other side now. Oh, oh you broke something. It. You broke it. There they go. All right, we're working on a shift linkage over here. So we now have a shift linkage. Up over here. Over there. Now that you went on the wrong side, we're going to show what happened. We changed out the coil because the uh, new coil doesn't work, so we put a, another new coil on it. Maybe this one will work. And then, uh, so I made up the shift linkage piece here. I used uh, some four speed uh, knucklehead junk. Yeah, and we stuck it onto this 45, so now we got knucklehead parts on the 45. So, so this clevis looks a hell of a lot better than that piece of crap clevis that they sold with this piece. Now this piece here, I forget which one it is, but I think it's like 38, 37. Okay. And this is a few of those years mixed up. We got, yeah. We got a 39 tranny, a 40, 41 motor. This is like one of those cat, that Cadillac with a with the guy. We got a 32 <laughs> to 34 frame that's been modified to be a 35 <coughs> to 36 frame. And uh, so there you go. It looks more like about a 35 or 36 bike with a late model motor in it. So. Late model is in 41. 40, 41, yeah, it's late model. Late model 41. That's why I had to make all these lines. Yeah. And we still got the really small clutch and it works, see? It doesn't raise. Yeah, so sticky. Little, I need a little help there. New chain in there. Get all kinds of new parts in there. All right, so now we got this in here. So now I got to do, I got to get the primary cover up over here and make it fit. So we're going to get the kickstand out of the way, get that out of the way. I'm get that clutch. This here, hopefully, will be out of the way. This is that ugly reproduction Paco primary cover. Paco. So right now, the problem is this just sits out too far. And it hits. Hits. Don't beat it. Precision fitting. Scrape the paint. Now we have a problem right here. Yep. With the battery box. So who's, who's got the felt tip this week? Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a hit issue right here. Mm. Now when this is all together, we have an overlap of about at least 80 thou on the back side there. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim this over. It's an eighth of an inch on this one. And they'll set a coil wire sitting right on that edge. Yeah, you don't want that either. So I'm going to just go from like right here. And, here, let me mark that. Here, from right well, there. To about right here. Well, that's, a, that's the way the polishing guy did the marking. Why do you want this polish? And then you're going to take it over the grinder and grind the F out and of then it. And we're going to grind it back and the frick out of it. Just a little bit between mm -hmm. what mark was it? Between that mark and that mark. That grease mark to that and grease we're mark. We're going to hold it right off of this nice area here. 
You want me to watch you grind it? I'm not sure how I'm going to grind it yet. My, my good one is broken right now. I wore it out. Oh, that big beast thing? Yeah, I wore it out. Oh, bummer. It doesn't cut very good with that steel piece in there now. No kidding. See now it sticks way above the, the real part. So does it still spin? Yeah, but it doesn't cut. It just galls up every time well, it touches the steel. So you need so another. Now, so now I'm going to have to heat this up a torch and get this nut off because I bet you somebody put sleeve retainer lock on it. Sleeve retainer lock, because which when, is the badass. Because before you did that, when you hit the button, when you let go of the button, the wheel would take off. And <laughs> that 3600 RPM, it bounced pretty good on the floor. Yeah. It starts chasing around and bouncing off your feet and walls and whatever else around. Yeah. All right, so I guess we're stuck using these stupid tools like this. Hey, hey, that's a good grinder. I don't like this one. I hate these things. We've got a few other ones over to choose from, too. Oh. Okay, look at moving, man. You're putting it to sleep. Okay, so we're getting we're, boring, man. Where was that mark at? Over there, yeah. Yeah. Sounding too good. You burned it up already? I think you burned it up already. Uh oh. That's not good. Am I supposed to make that noise? No. <laughs> I don't think so. You sure? Is this one of your freaking Craigslist? Oh, I bought a new grinder. No, this one we bought from uh, Makita? I think it came from the energy company went under. sound like crap but it still works. We might have to retire it one of these years though. So then we got one of these. Well that'll just clean it up. This one's a Hagen or a Hilton. Hilt tea. Okay, whatever. Hilton. Oh that's no. a hotel. That's a hotel. That's close enough. Here's the somebody that jammed it outside. Okay, this looks dangerous. Off. Just throw it down. Is it Gino or you? Uh, Gino's one doesn't like the guards. It appears you didn't do enough of that loop. There. Yeah, we're talking about you again. Ooh, look at that nice smooth surface. All right, here we go. Coming back. Test fit. Switch over there? Yes, there is. Yeah, well, no, there's a break. I mean, well, there's a break switch. There's a... If there's an old pressure dummy switch, let's try to put a light somewhere for the dummy to see. 
Okay, let's see if we can find a spot to put. We talking like, about the owner? I like dummy switches. We we talking about the owner? I have those on my race bike. It's called dumb shit turn the ignition off. Yeah. That's what that light's for. Or one well, of them's like dumb shit. Just turn because the light's on or flashing doesn't mean we don't make a run. We make a run. Do the, just, it just when the run's over, shut the switch off. That's what. Yeah, that's the for. mistake I was. Oh, there's the switch for the fuel pump that I didn't turn on. Oh, you needed that. And then immediately commenced to starting, driving, crashing. Driving, yes. In that order? And braking. Yeah, you, three you ribs. left out the brake and the value of the motor car. So. Three ribs and trip to the hospital and yeah, the ambulance on my back. All those parts replaced, but the parts Down that broke on the bike weren't. Oh, seriously? Yes. You grow back. The bike is valuable. You grow back. The bike's gone. Yeah. Okay, it appears that we have a little bit of room over here now. Depending on how it goes in. Well, it's going to go in right flush. How are you going to oil this damn thing? It's self-oiling. <laughs> like one way? One pass oiling? It has something called a channel on it. Okay, so I think we got enough room there now. It's close. Could give it a little bit more if we wanted to. Get closer and take a look. Dude, you took a bunch off. That's pretty wrong. I did take a bunch off. Oh, I'm not supposed to call him dude. Tatro. There's no dudes around here. No dudes, even though we're in California. Yeah, fucking foreign in here. Yeah. Okay, well, it looks like we got a lot of room in here. Okay. We are a little tight right there, but we do have room now, which we didn't have before. Yeah. So that shouldn't hit it anymore. So I'm thinking we're probably pretty good. I think we're good. I think we're going to have to throw some some new powder coat on there. You mean, where's that powder coat? Where's the have? rattle can? Rattle can. No, that's the same stuff. Isn't that the same stuff? Yeah. Right, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the goop off of this, and we'll see what we got to work with here. All right. Can we turn it off? Yeah. Thank you. I'll be back. All right, here we go. Here we go. Seven sixteenths wrench. Yeah. You got that one? That'll work. All right. That'll work. That'll work, Jim. That'll do. You didn't touch up the battery before you put it in, Fred. I think we can just... Too late right now. Too late now. Just any Q-tips? No. I don't have earplugs in my ears, though. Hmm? About the earplugs in my ear. No, you need Q-tips. Oh, you no, just no. spray a little paint on the Q-tips and you'll be all set. That's, that's way too tech. So you're putting a dang blue, the blue lock on it with something with a nylock. Yeah. What's up with that? It lubricates the thread so we can torque the shit out of it. Yeah. I love that. And it locks it in. And you're all done. Yeah, that still works. Notice how it's not a suicide space put. Ooh. It appears this lock tie is working. Why are you undoing it? Because I want to put lock tie on it. Oh. You can just put it in there now. It'll be loose in a minute. See, the locking nut's not working, but the lock to see. Okay. So they call it a suicide clutch because they had a tendency to just pop out, pop in. Well, suicide comes back. Yeah. This is a foot clutch. It stays wherever you put it. It's adjustable by that spring right there. Mm. This is for the folks out there. No bring you up to speed on now why do you have a foot clutch on the bike because that's probably what they start off in the old days with right because when you have a hand shifter you need a foot clutch oh ba -dum -ba -dum. See. yeah i know that they know that custom paint job i might have yeah this is cool a show paint job show job and Can the rest paint. of the pre previously very rusted shit. That was there. actually chrome I blasted off of there. Uh -huh. It was that special uh, brown wrinkle chrome. Called rust? <laughs> uh, there's some of that involved maybe too. <laughs> it has that aged look to it. Yeah. It doesn't look quite aged now. Yeah. You now the customers are going to be very happy or very pissed. I'm not sure what. But we don't know because he's not giving I us any really care. It's just it's done. Anybody that's watched the Tatro film understands that 
He doesn't really care. He just does it the way it's supposed to be it. done. I don't care how you want That's, what, what, You didn't even let me finish. That's what I said. He does it the way it's supposed to be done. I don't done. care what you film either. I don't care. <laughs> trying yeah. to give a guy a compliment. And he... Look at that. He moves up and down like this. Oh. So you go around a corner. It moves up and down. So you got clearance in here for your clutch. Clearance, clearance. You go like that. He releases. Yep. You do a power shift real quick and go right back, just like I do on my military bike that you don't even see. And that's how you work it. You just got, it's just like a new twin cam. It's got four nuts to hold it together. Wow. Except this one came out in 26. 1926. Maybe it was 2026. Depends on oh, what the video's being watched. Futuristic. It depends on when the video's being watched. All, All right, right, what's next? Um, well, I can't do the shifter because I have no gas tanks. We have to put some rubbers up here for the gas tanks. That we rubbers? Have to make. Yes. We need to make some prophylactic? We need to make some rubbers. The primary, uh, we didn't tighten this primary up yet. You're watching me work, I didn't finish my job. You're interrupting me over here. Did you put some blue on that? I did put some special, and it's a lock nut too. You, Mechanical locking nut. Did you put blue on that? I put some blue on it. Oh, look at, hear that rattle? That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. And the key thing is we now have clearance to the battery box. Clearance, clearance? And we also have shifter clearance over here. And we have a shifter rod in here now too, which is really nice. And make all that shit. So that's a good start. See, now we can actually make a gas line through here. Okay. Which we never got, you haven't even got there yet, have you? That's why we can't run the bike, we have no gas line. Okay, how does this, this all tight now? Yeah. Did you tighten it? I did. Did I tighten it? Did you, well, we'll see here in a second. Oh, Ooh. that is like tight. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, you, you didn't, oh, look at that. I did good. Somebody had to write Tetra Torque in the house. Somebody just been watching them. Only been watching them for freaking 10 years. Okay, the coil's mounted now. All right. You, you, cut my, gonna, you can cut my face looking like Do you think it's going to uh, work? No. Yes, maybe. <laughs> I got it. We don't know. <laughs> One of those answers is correct. No, yeah, no yes, maybe. Uh, do you think the uh, handlebars are tightened up? No. No. Well, okay. no. well these aren't exactly bars. Either. We don't really know what we're going to use for bars yet. I haven't got that far. These you came off, these came off uh, Dad's 31 that I made. I made these back in the early 80s. Custom. These were three different pieces when I started. You probably couldn't tell that now, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, we have too much fun. Yeah. I think we're gonna go ahead and torque it down just a little bit, just to, just in case we move the bike. We wouldn't want the handlebars power. to pop out. Just in you're... case we actually start up and try to make it rideable. Maybe we should tighten. That thing was pretty loose. Up a little bit. Well, there's no functional throttle in here, so it's just it spins. But it's at least uh, mounted on the bike. And we never we never painted these lights up on here, so you can take these lights off and shoot some silver up in there. So we had to make these lights because they're not available. I can I can. Yeah. Can I? That's something else needs to be worked on. All right. So how what do you think those gas tanks look like? They look black. I don't need to pull them off so they can cool off so you can touch them. Am I coming over there now? Only 133 degrees right now. 133, my old battalion. My CB battalion. They appear to be sort of blackish looking. Old CB battalion. We don't feel like, oh, that's way too shiny for us. A kangaroo baton. Oh, it looks very, glossy very classic is. looking. It's pretty glossy looking. <laughs> See, it's got a lot. <laughs> hey, you going to scratch the paint. Yeah. That's 100% baked on paint. It would never scratch. I'm going to get a garbage can out of that. That's already going to leak. Put that thing up there. Oh, that's the heater we worked on all winter and never worked. It works fine. It'll be sitting there for the next five years. Well, at least 
next couple of months till it gets cold again. How come this one's burning my fingers? Because it's really hot? No. Oh, okay. Now, this is the one I lost the uh, thing done inside the hole, I think. <laughs> Check out the body work we did on that. That's pretty nice. Very classic. This is top of line stuff here. It appears that the uh, paint got rubbed off by somebody's finger when they held onto it, putting it in the oven. I got that special wrinkle look on it in places. A wrinkle and a dent. We did a lot of body work on these. Okay. Cheers, the threads are still good. So now I gotta put all of this stuff back together. There's the missing piece. Maybe. If we're lucky, that's the missing piece. And there's another missing piece in here. Do you think it would matter if any of this winds up in the oil lines? That could be a problem. Uh -oh. So, uh oh, there's more in there. See that? Oh, look at that, right up there. Yeah, that appears to have some hidden debris on it. That came up. I can't see it on this side. It's very important you get all the, the taping crap out of there. Look at all that rust in there. Nice rust. Right after I blasted it. I blasted that a few years ago. It appears to have some rust, and it's probably from that uh, soldering we were doing in there. That flux went through. It looks like the. Uh, okay, I'm I'm done. We'll be back. We got there. Drum. Ah. Drum of teeth. It matches the rest of the bike now. How's it look from that side? Ah, it looks good. It looks just like that pendant over there next to it now. Black. Yeah. Except this is gloss and not semi gloss. All right. Now we gotta put rubber in here. Sure, how we're gonna do that. So we have rubber right here. Pull this rubber up. Rubber. I don't know what they were using this for. Head gasket. It's a five bolt, four bolt, five bolt, four cylinder. Yeah. All right, these are supposed to have rubbers up in here to help dampen vibration. We have to figure out how much rubber we need in here. It goes in between these pinch bolts right here. Hear that noise? You don't want you don't want to hear that. No, you don't want to hear that. It's supposed to have a piece of rubber in there. So there's one piece of rubber in there. It appears to be a little shit locking. So that means we have to have a piece of rubber. Still only got one piece of rubber. There we go. So now we need two pieces of rubber in here. There. Sound a little different? Yeah. It appears we need two pieces of rubber. So that means we've got a gap in there that's that big. Now this rubber here is pretty compressible if you notice. I can squeeze it pretty good. So we're going to have to cut this up into a strip. And we're going to have to wrap it around the frame. Where these two clamp areas are. Space is Gino made, go right here. Like that. Like that. 
So the two tanks pull together hard against this, but it's pushed against the rubber right here, so they can't vibrate. And that'll keep it from breaking up way up up here. So we got to at least put one down here. I don't know if they had one down here, you know, one on the side, but they had some on the top too. It's been a while since I worked on my bike, I don't remember. But I know for a fact we had at least two of them in there. You know, they're going to be off this bottom one first. That's the first place. The top one I'm not sure about yet. And it appears the top one is probably bigger than that too. So we'll have to figure that out and make that. I already did the other tank up there so I know it was different. So it took more. It's a pretty complicated design, isn't it? Yeah. It looks pretty simple until you actually go to do it. You know, all this crap you got to deal with. This tank here. This tank's a lot heavier. Bunch of oil on to the old right here under here. Now we're going to see if two rubbers will get the job on this one. Appears to be doing the job. So two rubbers will work if it'll fit in there. Definitely gonna do in two rubbers. Let's see this one. You can see the gap in here. See the gap along the rails, not even. You can see this tank's all bent in. It's real close right here, bent here. Now you can see in there. You get way up in here. So you can see the gap in here. It gets tight right here. This big gap. It gets tighter right here. And then there's another gap back through here. The tanks are not very even on how they're made. Definitely different. So we got to deal with that. And the other thing we got is a shift lever over here. Custom teacher machine paint shop. You like that? We had a one day turnaround. Oh wow. I actually did one after one night. We work quick around here. Oh yeah. The trick here is to get it through here without scratching it. This had original wrinkle rusty chrome on it. Oh yeah? Yeah, top and line. I couldn't find a cab plate shift bolt, so that's the chromium plated one. So this goes either here or here, depending on how this gets bent. Right now it appears to be bent like this. But if you notice these don't line up very well. So we'll have to do a little bit of work on that part. The next problem is, is, I think I'm in neutral right now. Maybe not, because I can't move it. See, so we have a chain on it so it doesn't roll. Because right now we're in low gear. So. so 
touch wood grain now. Is that original? Original to this bike? Oh yeah. No, they had a black plastic stock. Okay, I think we're in neutral because I moved it. I'm turning the motor over my hands. Didn't want to turn it. So you have to adjust this so you're in neutral position. This is this here. So right now this is bottomed out. So it looks like we're going to be close to adjusting that maximum adjustment right now. So I might have to shorten this rod a little bit to get some room for adjustment in here. Because that right now that thing's way up about to here. So I have to be a little more fine tuning on this. I got to bend this here to make it line up a little bit better. As I bend this out, it will make it longer to push forward, which will bring this back here. So then I'll have to adjust this back if I can't because it's bottomed out, so I have to shorten a quarter inch or something off of this. And you gotta make sure you clear all this up under here because we have to still get a air cleaner right here. Blow holes here, and we gotta make a gas line that's gonna go from here over to here. So all these things have to be in the and these have a tank bag for 40, 47 to 50 tank bags, like, which is not stock, but that's what it's made for. All right, well, there's where we're at for tonight. Got something done. Okay, working on these gas tank rubber mounts here. So I took that piece of rubber I had, cut strip, made two wraps around the frame, only one on the bottom, and we got two on the rest of it all the way, three quarters of the way around. And we got two zip ties holding together tight on the frame. So this one here is right where the bolt is up under here. So that's right there. So that's this one to push directly on it. This one here, the bolt's right up here, so I can't get this further forward because of the casting. So I'm gonna sit right there. So that one keeps it from hitting against the frame. And I had to rotate these zip ties about this way because they were up under here and there's no frame clearance up under there. So these have to be rotated down here. The other tank sits flat like that, so it clears it. So that's right here. So this frame here doesn't have the recesses like the other side. It just sits flat. So it works a little bit easier. So as long as you got straight clearance this direction here, these here will clear just fine. So I already checked the fit on that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tanks on here for now. I'm going to go ahead and get all these oil lines all hooked back up. And then these should be pretty well just about done. We'll have to custom make the spacer right here, depending on how much pinch we're going to have in the tank. We're not sure how much this is until it's together. So I want to have a little bit of compression on the rubber, but not so much I'm going to break these ears off. So we'll get that figured out and make these and then clean them up and put them on. So there we go. We'll be back later.